Hey, I'm Srini, host and founder of the Unmistakable Creative Podcast and the creator of Maximize Your Output with Mem. And in this video, I'm going to show you how to use Mem's revolutionary new feature, Smart Write and Edit, to synthesize your notes, to summarize podcast transcripts, book notes, and just about anything else that you could imagine, how to use your notes to create content, how to format text using Smart Write, and so much more. This new feature from Mem is revolutionary. I've never seen anything like it in all the years that I've been doing this work. And I've pretty much tried every AI writing tool under the sun, and none of them even come close to this. I think you'll be really blown away. Now, let's get to the video. What I'm going to do in this video is I'm going to show you a new feature from Mem called Smart Write and Edit, which is revolutionary in terms of knowledge management, content creation, and pretty much anything that has to do with managing large volumes of information. And I'm gonna go through four different use cases here as I've written here in my outline, but there's a couple things that I want you to keep in mind. One is that it does make an occasional error and will give you inaccurate information, but that's very rare. And in order to avoid that, there's one really important key, and that is that you have to use very specific commands. And the more specific your commands are, the better. I'm gonna go through four different use cases. The first is going to be extracting information from notes, because often when we have things like book notes or podcast transcripts, we don't actually want the entire thing. We just want certain parts or we want certain quotes. And that's what we want to be able to do with this feature. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to extract some quotes from a podcast transcript. Now, there are two different ways that you can do this. The first is just to go into the podcast transcript and uh, highlight the title of the note and extract it. One thing to keep sure you want to make sure of is that this thing is less than a thousand words, because if you highlight a thousand words, you'll often find that this doesn't work. The other is just to create a separate mem. And so we'll go into both examples. So in this case, what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on this podcast transcript for George Co. And I'm going to just say 10 quotes by George Co. for a Twitter thread. Now, keep in mind, the reason I have to say by George Co. and this goes back to what I told you earlier about being very specific is because my quotes are also in there. And I don't want it to extract my quotes. I only want it to bring quotes from George. So we're going to go ahead and press Enter. And what you will see here in just a second is that it will actually give us quotes from this interview by George, which then I can use to promote this podcast episode via Twitter. And there you see, we have 10 quotes specifically for a Twitter thread. I'm going to go ahead and copy these and then paste them here because we're going to come back and I'm going to show you what this can do in terms of formatting as well in just a second. So that's one example. Now, let's say we wanted to create a separate mem. What we could do is we could say, let me create this mem titled quotes from George Co. And <clears throat> then what I can tell it to do is say quotes about education by George Co. And what I can do is go ahead and click Smart. And it will extract quotes now from George's podcast episode, which is pretty magical if you think about it, because we can get the most important information that we want to get out of any piece of information. And so you can see here, this actually is one of the quotes from the episode. And you can see it only brought one quote in this case, but we could have asked it for more specifics. So that's one example and one use case, which is podcast transcripts. So let's go back to the outline here for my tutorial. And let's do this. We're going to extract quotes on a specific topic now. Now, let's say that I wanted to extract quotes on a subject that I have a lot of information about in this case, which is cognitive biases. What I can do is say, Notes on cognitive biases. Now what I'm going to do is say 10 key ideas about cognitive biases. And keep in mind, the more that you put into MEM, the more accurate this comes, becomes and the more it actually starts to sound like you. I have probably close to 10,000 MEMs in here from all the various book notes that I've taken. So it ends up being really valuable. So you can see here that it actually gives me a bunch of different notes. Some of these are actual titles of my notes, which is very cool. So the other thing I can do here is I can actually expand these notes. I can say, OK, let's go ahead and take this piece of text and let's go ahead and expand this. 
And what you'll see here in just a second is that it will expand this and actually pull more content from within the database and sometimes even from outside of the database to create this note and to expand on it. So this becomes very useful. For example, when you're writing a blog post or you get stuck, and I'll show you here in just a second how we can also use this to write blog posts. And obviously, the more complicated the command is that you give the smart write and edit, the longer it's going to take for it to generate something. And you can see here this is taking a little longer than the previous quotes, but there we go. So now what we can do is we can go ahead and just put that here. And we'll come back to that. So now you can see this actually just pulled from that note without me having to go and copy and paste it or even use Spotlight to add it to this post. And now we have this entire note. So I could expand this entire note and create an entire note about this one subject. So that's one way to create notes on a specific topic. Now let's go back and do one other thing. Let's extract quotes from a book. So in this case, what I want to do is I'm going to ask it to bring me quotes from a book called Dopamine Nation. I'm going to say quotes from, let's just go ahead and give it a specific number. And again, this is one of those things that's nuanced. Sometimes it gets a bit funky, but most of the time it works perfectly. And we're going to go ahead and have it do that. And what you'll see here is that it will actually give me quotes from the book Dopamine Nation, which is incredibly cool because of the fact that you're able to extract information. So if I'd gotten more specific, I could have actually asked it to say, give me quotes about dopamine. As you can see here, it brought me the 10 different quotes from Dopamine Nation. Pretty cool. All right, now let's go into Dopamine Nation and let's go ahead and do one other thing. We're gonna go here into the next use case, which as I've mentioned here, is summarizing information. Now, one of the biggest benefits of progressive summarization, which is a concept from Tiago Forte's book, Building a Second Brain, is it allows you to get the gist of something very quickly. And there are a couple of different ways you can do this. You can do a bullet point summary, you can do a paragraph summary. So for example, let's say I wanted to create a paragraph summary of this video for my YouTube description. Then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna highlight the title and say, turn this into a description for a YouTube video tutorial. <clears throat> and in just a few seconds, it's going to use all the information that's in here, and it's going to give me a paragraph description. And now, I don't have to spend time writing a YouTube description, so that part is done for when this video goes live. And <clears throat> basically, I'm done with that, so I'm just gonna go ahead and give it a title right now. So I remember what it is. Now, we've done that. So we've actually gone through and created a description of this video. But the other thing I could do is summarize this video with bullet points. And later on, if I wanted to, I could transcribe this video and summarize it in 10 bullets from the transcript. And what you'll see here is it's going to actually give me basically 10 bullet points that summarize the video. And that's my bullet point summary of this video. Pretty cool. Okay, now let's go back to the book notes that we were looking at. And let's say we wanted to add a summary here. We can just click add a summary. And what it will do is it will give me a complete summary of this book, Dopamine Nation, based on the notes that are in here. And that way, when I look at the note, I don't have to do anything other than go through here and I get the gist of the note in seconds. So one of the things that Tiago Forte talks about with progressive summarization is first you go through and you bold things, then you go through highlight and underline, and then if you wanted to go to the fourth layer of progressive summarization, you add an executive summary. This basically eliminates the need for you to write the executive summary, and it just creates it from the notes that you have captured. All right, now let's go into yet another magical feature of the smart write and edit feature. We're gonna turn a transcript into a blog post here, all right? What I'm gonna do is I am going to pull up a thing titled the George Co. Pod Summary of George Co. Podcast Episode. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to say, turn this into a thousand word blog post. And as I mentioned earlier, the more complex the command is, the longer it takes, but it's still remarkably fast. So there we go. 
Now what we can do is we can say, let's go ahead and expand this and make it longer. And while it's doing that, what you'll see is that what it will come back with is an expanded version of this post. And now what I can do is I can say, add headers to every paragraph. And what it'll do is it will actually add headers for each paragraph, so I don't have to do that either. So for any podcaster, somebody like me who has a thousand plus episodes in their archives and all these different transcripts in mem, this ends up being valuable. I, and then one other thing I want to do is I want to say add a call to action to the interview on Unmistakable Creative. And what it will do is it will rewrite this paragraph so that a call to action is added and encourages people to listen. And there you go, right there. And so now, in a matter of just a few minutes, we have taken a podcast transcript and we have turned it into a blog post. And if I wanted to, I can do one other thing. Let's go ahead and add a bio about pianist George Coe. And if George has a public presence on the internet or if there's anything we can find about him, it'll automatically add this bio. And there we go. Right there we have George Coe's bio and it probably used some of the information that was also in my transcript with him. Okay, so now let's go back to our outline for Smart Write and Edit. And what we're going to do is we are going to do one other thing. We're going to write a blog post on a topic. So let's say that I want to write a blog post titled How Cognitive Biases Influence Our Decisions. And I'm going to go ahead and just change this. What I'm going to do is say, turn this into a blog with five headers. And what this will be doing is actually looking through all the notes inside of my database. And this even works even if you don't have a ton of information inside of MEM, but it actually starts to sound remarkably like you and your voice the more information that you put inside of MEM. So there we go. And now we have a blog post that is actually based on all of the various notes that I have put inside of MEM. And that took all of maybe 15 or 20 seconds. All right, so now that we've written a blog post, we have uh, turned a transcript into a blog post. Let's do something fun. This is something that Dennis, the founder of MEM, showed me. So we're going to go ahead and create a bio for me. And we'll go ahead and extract this bio. And again, these types of things depend largely on the amount of information that is available on the internet. So what you'll see here is that it comes up with this right here. Now, some of this is inaccurate, depending on where they pulled it from, because I've done over a 1,000 episodes now. But here's what it's going to be fun. We're going to turn this bio into a poem. And now, you can see that it basically turned my bio into a poem. All right? So one last thing we're going to do is we're going to outline a podcast episode. And since we're on the subject of cognitive biases, let's do that.
And we're going to go ahead and have it do seven bullets. And now we have a simple outline for a podcast episode without having to spend a lot of time. And this is something my friend Gareth and I do when we're working on our latest episode of the Unmistakable Creativity Hour. Because it's not as structured and formatted as interviews, we have to come up with a topic and outline a topic, and this speeds up that process dramatically. So now I want to go back to the final thing, which is formatting. And there are a couple of things that are very cool about this. So you can see here that we can convert bullet points into a paragraph and vice versa. Let's do this. So you can see here that this is a set of bullet points. And what I can do is say convert this into a paragraph. And now we've converted this into a paragraph. But let's say that I wanted to do the opposite. I can say convert this into bullets. And it goes back to being bullets. Now earlier, we extracted quotes from a book. And what I want to show you is something else that's very cool in terms of formatting. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to just type the command, remove quotation marks. And sometimes these commands take a little longer because they're more complicated. But in a few seconds or you know, 30 seconds or so, we'll actually see the same text with all the quotation marks removed. One thing I recommend, particularly when you're dealing with large blocks of text when you want to use the Smart Write and Edit feature, is to break it up into smaller blocks of text to speed up your workflow. But you'll see here, this is probably one of the longer commands that you know, it's executing. So now we can do that. Now what we can say is we want to format this. And we can say add line breaks between paragraphs, and it will do that. The other thing that we can do is we can proofread, which is incredible. We can correct spelling errors, correct typos, or anything of the sort. And I'll show you that here in just a second. We'll go back into one of our podcast transcripts. So you can see here again, this is one of those commands that is a bit more long to execute, but there we go. Now we've reformatted this, we've removed all the quotes, and we've actually created line breaks between all these things. So that's pretty cool. Now let's go back to one of my podcast transcripts here. And what we'll do is we'll go into the George Co. episode here that we were looking at. And what I'll do is I'll just highlight a section here and say fix typos. And what it will do is it will bring back the text with all the typos fixed. And now we've got a cleaned up transcript. So obviously it goofed here because it had my name as Serene and it changed it to Serendipity, but beyond that, it's pretty perfect. Like I said, this is probably one of the most revolutionary features I've ever seen come from the team at MEM. I've never seen anything like this. I have probably tried every AI writing tool there is, and nothing compares to this because it's so specific to your own use case. It's much more based on your content instead of pulling general content, as you can see here just from something like this YouTube video description. And as always, if you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments below.